In this video, I'd like to talk about function inputs and outputs, specifically focusing on equations. So we're going to be given a function and its corresponding equation, and we'll have to be able to answer this question about the function. So remember that the number that goes on the inside of the function, that is your input, and whatever value the function spits out, whatever it's equal to, in this case 48, that's going to be our output. So for these question types, we're not told what the input is, we're just given what the output is. Or essentially, if you remember that when you have a function, that it's equal to your y value. So usually you might have a function with the variable x, and this function is the y value. So when you plug in different values of x, the function will tell you what the y value is. And in this case, we're essentially given the y value, or the function value, the f of t value, and we need to figure out what the input is. So in this case, since we are using a variable of t, I will change that. But we need to figure out what t value you plug in to this function so that it essentially spits out a y value, or a function value, 48. Now, usually you might see it the other way around where you have the input value, let's say you have f of 2, and you need to figure out what the function value is, or what the y value is. So with these problems, they're a little bit more straightforward. You just look at the equation, anywhere you see a t, you replace that with whatever you put on the inside. So in this case, 2. So we'll replace this t, instead of 5t, you're going to have 5 times 2, minus 7, so that's 10 minus 7, which is 3. So when you plug in 2 to this function, it has a y value of 3. So this is the usual way to solve these, to deal with these functions. But this problem is actually the reverse of it. Now we're given the output value, and we have to figure out what value you originally have to input to get that output. So in other words, we're missing the t value, and we're given the y value. So in this case we are given that y is 48, and we have to find t. So what we're going to do, since we know that the function is the same as the y value, we're just going to replace f of t with what it's equal to. So in this case, 48. We're going to set f of t equal to 48, or we're going to set what f of t is equal to, this, f, or this 5t minus 7, and set that equal to 48. So let me make some room so that we can do that. So we have that f of t, which is 48, is also equal to 5t minus 7. And now we have an equation that we can solve and try and figure out what t is. So let me just rewrite this so that we have some room to work on it. So 48 is 5t minus 7. You need to solve for t, so let's add... 7 on each side, you get 55 is 5t. And then to get rid of this multiplication, we will divide each side by 5. And what you get is that t is equal to 11. Or at least this is what we think is the correct answer. At this point, you want to check your work. And to do that, it's fairly simple. We're just going to plug it back in. So we think t equals 11 will give us a function value of 48 but we have to actually plug in 11 to our function to see if it works. So f of 11, we plug it in up here to this equation, you get 5 times 11 minus 7, so that's 55 minus 7, and that does give you 48. So we checked it, and this was the correct answer. So you can feel confident that you did this correctly. So let's go through several more so that you can get more practice. And all these problems are going to be very similar. We're given an equation for the function. And we're also told that the function, with some mysterious input value, gives you an output value that's known. So in this case, we know that when we plug in whatever that mysterious t value is, we'll get back 23. Though we don't know what this is. This is what we're trying to figure out. But what we can do is just set our function equal to this output value, this 23. And by doing that, by setting 23 equal to the function, since that's the output value we expect, 
we can set it equal to the equation for the function, this minus 9t minus 4, and that way we can solve for t. Once we figure out a value for t, then essentially we found this input value to the function which gives you an output of 23. So let's solve this equation for t. We can add 4 to each side so that we isolate the t term. So let's work up here. We've got 27 is minus 9t. Now we want to get rid of this multiplication by negative 9, so we can use division. And minus 9 over minus 9 is 1, so this just becomes t. And 27 divided by 9 is 3, but one of the terms is negative, so that will carry on. So we think that t is minus 3. Now the nice thing about these problems is, is that they are fairly simple to check. All you have to do is plug this back in and see if you do actually get 23 when you plug in negative 3 to t. So let's check that. Let me just make some more room here. We want g of minus 3, and the question is, does this actually equal 23? And if it does, then you can feel confident that t does equal minus 3. So we're going to plug that in back to our original equation here. So g of minus 3. We have minus 9 times minus 3, and then minus 4. Minus 9 and minus 3 would be a positive 27, and then minus 4 does get back to 23. So since we got the answer we expected, we can feel confident that t does equal minus 3, and when you plug that into your function, this g of t, it does give you a y value of 23. So let's move to the next one, where we have h of t is 4t plus 20. And we're told that h, when you plug in some mystery t value, that the function will spit out a y value of 4. So remember that y and h of t are interchangeable. And we know that h of t, I'm just going to rewrite the equation, is 4t plus 20. And we're told that when we put in that mysterious t value, that the function is equal to 4. So we don't know what that t value is yet, but we do know that when we plug in some t value, that the function is equal to 4. And our goal is we have to figure out what this t value is. What value of t do we plug in here such that the function would be equal to 4? So to do this, we're going to set our function, this equation, equal to this output value. So 4t plus 20 equals 4. And this way we can figure out exactly which t we have to plug into our function so that it's equal to 4. So we can solve for t, so subtract 20 on each side, you get 4t is minus 16, and then divide each side by 4, cancel out that multiplication, so that is 1, so t is 16 over 4 is 4, and one of those was negative, so t would be negative 4, and of course we want to check our work. You don't want to ever just assume that you did get the right answer, you want to make for sure, or make certain that you got it right. So we're going to plug in to h, this negative 4, and we're going to plug it into our equation and see if we get back a function value of 4. So we have 4 times minus 4, and then we're going to add 20 to that. And 4 and negative 4 would make minus 16 plus 20 would give us 4, which is exactly what we expected. So we know for sure that a t value of negative 4, when you plug that into your function h, it does return a y value of positive 4. And we'll do one final question here. This function g of x, let me just make a little more room. So g of x, I'll just rewrite it, is this 2x plus 9. And we know that our function value and our y value are interchangeable. And we're told that when we plug in some x value, we don't know what it is, that's our mystery value, but when we plug in some x value into the function g, it returns a y value of 15. So g of some x value, we don't know what it is, gives us 15. And our goal is to figure out what is that x value. So to do that, we know that our function, when we plug in that x value, is equal to 15. And our function is also equal to this equation. So we're going to set our equation, this 2x plus 9, equal to the function output value, equal to 15. And that way we can figure out exactly which x we would have to put in here 
so that when we do put it in our function, it gives us an output of 15. So we need to solve for x here, so subtract 9 on each side, so you get 2x is 6, and then divide everything by 2, and you get that x is 3. So we can check our work now. So what we think we found is that when you plug in 3 here, you do get back a y value 15. But we need to check. So let me do that here. We need to plug in 2g, positive 3. And so you get 2 times 3 plus 9. So 6 plus 9, which is 15. And since we get back the answer we expected, we can feel very confident that x does equal 3 in this problem. Or in other words, when you plug in 3 here to your function g, it does return a y value of 15.